Hi guys, this is Maxim from Sayos Mouthpieces. Did you ever struggle to find the best mouthpiece for your saxophone? I'm sure some of you did. So, I'm here to help you. Let's understand together a bit more about saxophone mouthpieces characteristics. First listen, the baffle. <laughs> Okay, so step baffle, rollover baffle, curve baffle, but what does this mean exactly? What is a baffle? The baffle is the part of the mouthpiece that is directly in front of the reed, inside the mouthpiece. So when you blow into your mouthpiece, this is where the airflow is deviated and sent into your saxophone. So what you have to keep in mind is that the shape of this part is directly responsible of the tone production, the tone quality, and also the playing sensation, free blowing or resistant aspect of the mouthpiece, for instance. So now we are gonna examine all these different shapes. So let's start with the blue mouthpiece baffle. So this mouthpiece is uh, very high. It's a high step baffle, which means it's very close to the reed and so the sound is really bright, really powerful, free-blowing and focused. So obviously it's a mouthpiece that is really good for playing pop, jazz, electro, rock music and in jazz music, if you like kind of Michael Breaker sound, this is a mouthpiece that is made for you. And what is good to know is that this mouthpiece works really well with small chambers and uh, some Sayos artists that are playing this kind of baffle uh, are Chad Lepskovis Brown or Mornington Lockett. Okay, so now the green one. This one is a curved baffle with a rollover at the beginning. So it's a baffle which is very edgy, which is medium bright and very, very powerful due to the rollover at the beginning. It works really well on uh, brass band and also jazz music if you like medium bright sounds. Uh, typically, Sayos artists that play this mouthpiece are Daru Beruzi from the Lucky Chops Brass Band and also Yure Buckle. So, now the purple one. So, this baffle is a medium step baffle. So, it's a step like the blue, but it's uh, a low step compared to the blue. So, uh, it's not as close to the reed as the blue one. Uh, so, with this kind of baffle, the sound is more balanced. Uh, I'll say a bit more into the dark side, but kind of medium anyway. And uh, it's also very flexible uh, baffle, so you can get darkness, you can get brightness with it. And uh, it's also very easy to blow with this kind of baffle. So if you don't really know what to pick because you don't know if you want to go dark or bright, this is a good choice. Uh, so typically, Sayos artists that play this baffle are Leland Whitty or Michael Wilbur from Moon Hooch. You have to know that it works better with medium and large chamber. So last but not least, the yellow. So it's a low baffle, a low circular baffle in this case, but it's nearly straight and uh, it provides you with a very dark and hairy tone. Uh, it works really well with both small and very large chamber, uh, so it's a really good mouthpiece for jazz. Uh, if you like like stand get sound, for example, this could be the, uh, uh, the baffle for you. Uh, typically, Sayos artists that plays on this kind of baffles are Stephen Denicott, Dana Stephens, or Sylvain Riflet. Uh, so a good choice too. You can notice also that there are some ridges in the mouthpiece baffle. These ridges add some power uh, on the mouthpiece without getting too much brightness with the additional power. So that's uh, a thing we're using a lot at Sayos. So these examples are signature mouthpieces of uh, Sayos artists and uh, you can find links to their pages with more information about their characteristics and their baffles in the description of the video. And now we're gonna hear the differences between all those baffles. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
thing to remember about the baffle. First, the baffle is the most important part of the mouthpiece. It really defines the sound characteristics. Second, if you want to have a very bright sound, be sure to have a high baffle. And if you want to have a dark sound, a low baffle. So, obviously, if you like Michael Brecker, if you like the saxophonist of Careless Whisper, you have to choose a high step baffle to get that really nasty bright sound. And uh, if you want more to play like uh, Stan Gates or Paul Desmond kind of sound, you really want a low baffle. Third, once the baffle is settled, the other parameters to check on the mouthpiece are the chamber and the tip opening. A fun fact for you, there are a lot of saxophonists that are coming to me and tell me, oh, the only thing I know for sure is that I want a very large chamber to get a dark sound. And sometimes at the end, they end with a small chamber and they are very happy because the low baffle does the job. I'm really curious to know which mouthpiece you like the most. Was it the blue one, the yellow one, the green one, or the purple one? Please write that down in the comment of the video. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, put a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And also don't forget to follow us on the social media. See you for the next video. Bye!